Hi, um, this is session two for our EOC preparation. Um, this is on characteristics of linear functions. And so this will include slope, slope intercept form, um, graphing, domain and range, and a couple of other items. Before we begin, if you would like to follow along, um, go ahead and click that button right here that says click here, and it will pull up a PDF file that you can print from your computer and follow along with us. Remember when you do that, it will pause the screen. So you'll need to come back to the video when you're done and um, it'll let you watch the rest when you click play. Okay, so here is what we would like to review with you. Um, this video will just review some concepts you learned this year. We'll talk about and answer the question, what is a function? We'll also talk about what is function notation? We will um, go over a review of domain and range. And then we're also going to do some writing. So we'll write some equations given some points, some slopes, or some intercepts. Now, when you take the Algebra EOC, it is made up of the following. So here are your big topics, functions and modeling, algebra and modeling, and statistics. And right now, you can see that we are going to be talking about functions and modeling. And this is 40% of your EOC. The first couple of slides um, go over some information, just a review that you may want to make sure you have in your notes. Um, this first slide here talks about domain and range, and it also talks about function notation. And these are some important concepts that you'll see in algebra, but you'll also see them in algebra two, pre-calculus, calculus. So these are in, um, very instrumental concepts. So if we look here at domain and range, this is just a review. Notice domain is following this x-axis, so domain represents the x values. So in your um, notes, you would have domain meaning your x values, which is like your input. And range, if you notice that, range is following your y-axis, which is f of x, that's like y. And that goes up on the y-axis, so that's your y. This is how I remember that. If you look, D comes before R in the alphabet, um, and X comes before Y in the alphabet. So that helps me remember that if I can think of domain and range, D comes first, it goes with X, range R comes next, it goes with Y. If you look here on the other example here, it says function notation. And it shows us this, this is read F of X, and it says F is the name of the function. Look how it tells you here, X is what goes into your equation, that's your input or your domain. And then 2x tells you what the function does. So in this specific example, whatever's in the parentheses, you just take it and you multiply it by 2. So it's important to know what that function notation means. Okay, so we just talked about domain and range, so let's go through this. Remember domain, D comes before R in the alphabet, so domain is our X values, our input, and range is our Y. So let's figure out our domain. Now when we figure out our domain, we are looking from left to right. So domain meaning left to right because that's like our X axis. When we do that, we find our graph and we can see that our first point is right here. Now remember, we're talking about our X value there. Our X value there is zero because it's right on that line. And as you move through this line, you want to find the other one following that X here where X is seven. So your domain, which can be written a lot of different ways, um, one fancy way is to say X such that X is between, oops, zero. Let me change this, I'm sorry. X such that X is between 0 and 7, and it can include those two because they're connected in the, in the graph. Um, sometimes it's just written all numbers between 0 and X. I mean, I'm sorry, 0 and 7. It depends on how your teacher or the test has it written. All right, let's look for the range. Remember, range is like the Y's, so we're going up and down looking at this graph. So we want to find our smallest Y value. And as we move up the graph, we want to find our biggest or our tallest or our longest y value, greatest y value. So here, our smallest y value happens here, which if we look at the y axis, it's at negative 2. And our greatest goes to 4. So when we write that, now we're dealing with y. So we say y such that 
it's between negative 2 and 4. Sometimes you may see it like this with negative 2 and 4. Okay, a review of slope really quick before we practice some problems is um, remembering what slope actually means. So remember that slope is rise over run. When you have a graph, it's best to use rise over run. Um, slope is also, just thinking of everything that represents slope that we've learned this year, y equals mx plus b, that's slope intercept form. The slope is the m. It's the number in front of the variable. Um, let's see, what else do we know about slope? Slope is the same thing as rate of, of change. So anytime you hear rate of change, that means slope. Um, slope is the same thing. What am I missing? Um, change in Y. Oops. Over change in X. All of these mean slope. In math, it's like learning a new language. So if you know the terminology, um, that will help you be successful on questions that's been asked. So I'm going to put another one here, and it's an incline. Um, it tells you the steepness of a line. You guys might be able to come up with a lot more, but this is just a way to organize all of these words. Kind of refresh your mind that if you hear any of these words, they all mean slope. Okay, last slide to make sure you have in your notes, and this is for the linear equations, and it's talking about different types of linear equations. So one that you've learned is called standard form, and that's when we have ax plus by equals c. Both variables are on the same side. So have this in your notes so you remember it. Um, Slope-intercept form is one of our most popular forms here, very important, and it's y equals mx plus b, keeping in mind that the m is the slope, and the b is the y-intercept, that's like your initial value. And I'm going to put that here too, so you know initial value is the same thing as y-intercept. And then point slope is one that you may or may not have gone over. Um, same thing here, it follows M is the slope. And then this specific form gives you a point on your line. So these are three forms when you're creating a line that can be important. Alrighty, now for our practice problems. This one says, suppose F of X equals four X minus one. Determine the value of F of four. Okay, so that's telling us, um, remember, whatever's inside is our input. So that tells us to take 4 and to plug that into our equation wherever we see an x. So let's see what we, got, we have here. That means take this, plug it in here. So f of 4, keep that format. We're taking the form, we're plugging it in wherever we see the x. And then the rest, I'm just going to bring down. That's part of our pattern. So it's saying, what's our answer if we plugged in 4 for x? Well, if we do the math here, it's 4 times 4, which is 16, and then 16 minus 1. So we have f of 4 equal to 16 minus 1, which is 15. So in this case, if it was multiple choice, you would pick 15. All right, b. If f of x equals 19, what would be the value of x? Now, this is important because it's a little different from the first one. Notice in the very first example that 4 was in the parentheses here. But here, it's equal to 19. That's different. So in this specific example, um, it's almost saying that you don't have x. In this case, you have f of x. So let me write my equation down here. And what it's saying is I could take this and I can plug it in wherever I see an f of x. So notice this is f of x, so I'm replacing it with a 19. Okay, now I have this. So now I just need to work backwards. It's saying what would my x have to be to give me 19? 
So I do the opposite here. It's like solving an equation. I add one. They cancel. I'll put it up here. I'm running out of space. 19 plus 1 is 20. Equal 4x. Okay, this is 4 times x, so do the opposite, which means divide. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. So in this case, it's saying, what does my x value have to be to give us an answer, answer of 19? My x value has to be 5. Okay, last type of question here. What would happen to f of x if we found f of x plus 4? So there's a couple of ways to do this. This is kind of a theoretical question. Um, it's, it's really testing your deep knowledge of this concept or standard. So what this is telling us is it's saying instead of having an x, let's go ahead and plug in an x plus 4 and see what happens. x plus 4. Okay, so I have a 4. x plus 4. See how I'm plugging in that x plus 4 wherever I saw the x. All right, now let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and distribute. Because when you have more than one thing, it's like the distributive property. We have 4 times x, which is 4x. We have 4 times 4, which is 16. And then we have minus 1. Now remember, you're not distributing the 4 with the minus 1 because the minus 1 isn't in parentheses. Okay, from here, we can actually combine this. So that gives us 4x plus 15. And this would be our answer. Now what we're doing here is we're taking this and we're actually comparing it with what we started with, which was 4x minus 1. So let's see what happened. What has happened is instead of a minus 1, we have a plus 15. So if we were to plug in x plus 4, you can see that's really, it's like taking this constant and adding 16 to your function. So that's kind of what's happened once you've changed that. Okay, this question, you may need to pause the screen, but this is a you can try question. So I want you to try this one. Um, this is a, a question that you could see on your EOC. This question is saying that Jerome is constructing a table of values that satisfies the definition of a function. Keyword there, we need to remember what function means. Which number can be placed in the empty cell, so right here, so that the value of table or table of values satisfies the definition of a function. All right, so I'm going to let you pause and I want you to select all that apply. So just grab some scratch paper, see if you can figure out the answer. Um, you may need to pause the screen in when you are ready. I want you to click this lovely button. I am ready for you to show me the answer and then we will make sure you are good to go. Okay, just go ahead and check your answer. In this case, it should have been two answers, A equals negative 5 and D for 2. Now, why is that the answer? Remember that function means that every input has its own output. So we're checking out these X values or these inputs here, and we want to see, are any of these repeating? In other words, are there any of them that are being matched to two numbers? So if we were to plug in um, negative 5, notice there's nothing here that has a negative 5, which is good news. That means that if we had negative 5 here, it could be mapped to 13. Now let me show you why 1 won't work. Let's say we put a negative 1. If we plugged in a negative 1, think about it. You can't plug in a negative 1 into an equation and then get 5 and then plug in negative 1 again and get a 13. That doesn't work. That's not functioning properly. So that one would not work. Um, so in this specific example, you're looking for x values or inputs that you could add to your inputs that are shown um, so that they are not repeating, so that the x values are all being mapped to its own y value. Okay, let's just go over this refresher page and make sure you're okay with this. Write the equation of the line that goes through 2, 2, 6, eight, and 6, 8. And we're going to do it in every form so that it kind of reminds you what to do. So always start by finding the slope. Remember the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we have two points there. So um, we want to take our y values, which are 2 and 8. And I'm going to subtract those first. Now it says y2 minus y1. 
So if you are one that likes to follow that formula, it doesn't matter which one you start with, but you can go ahead and label them. So in other words, I'm going to take my y2, which is 8. I'm going to subtract that by my y1, which is 2. Then I'm going to take my x2, which is 6. I'm going to subtract that by my y, I mean my x1, which is 2. Okay, now when I subtract that, I get 8 minus 2, which is 6. 6 minus 2, which is 4. And then I always reduce. Both of these are divisible by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2. All right, from here, let's go ahead and fill out each form. Now, point slope form is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So we're going to plug in what we know. We know our m is our slope. It's always our slope here, so I have that answer. And notice in this form, it gives you y1 and x1. That means you can plug in a point. Now, I know we have an x1 and y1 up here, but you actually can plug in more than just that. So you can plug in any point from your line. All right, so if we were to write this equation, we would have y minus that y1 should be replaced with a, with a um, y value from your point, which is 2. I'm using this point right now. Equals slope, which is 3 over 2. x minus, and then x1, we're looking for that point that matched with the 2, which in this case was another 2. Remember, I'm just using this point 2, 2. I'll write that here so you can see. And this is actually your equation in point slope form. It gives you a point and it gives you a slope. All right, slope intercept form, that's our most used form. That's y equals mx plus b. We're going to plug in what we know. We know the slope is 3 over 2. And we know we need to figure out the b. So when we need to do that, I'm just going to plug in a point. I'm going to stick with 2, 2. I'm going to plug in 2 for y and 2 for x because I want to solve to see what happens with my b. So when I do that, I'm going to first figure this out. I'm going to put this over 1 so I can multiply across. Um, if there's a 2 on top and bottom, see how both of these fractions, the 2 is on the top here and on the bottom here? That means that you can cross cancel. And when you do that, you have 3 over 1, which is just 3. I may have lost some of you there, but these are just two fractions, 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. And what I was saying is if there's a 2 on the top and on the bottom, you can cross cancel those. All right, we're trying to get b by itself, so I can subtract 3. And so we know that b is negative 1. Great. So we have our slope and our b. Now we can plug it all in. So that gives us y equals, oops, that's not a pretty cool color, your slope, which is 3 over 2, x, and your b, which is minus 1. All right, standard form. Now, standard form says you have ax plus by equals c. In other words, the x and the y are on the same side. What I'm going to do here, if you've already done all of this work, is just pick one, and let's go ahead and move the x over. So if we have y equals 3 over 2x minus 1, let's go ahead and move this over. It's by subtraction because we're moving it to the other side. So we have negative 3 over 2x plus y equals negative 1. Now sometimes you will not see an answer like that because they don't really like fractions sometimes with your standard form and the negative sometimes. So we can go ahead and multiply everything here by a negative 2 just to get rid of that negative sign and that fraction. And you always multiply by whatever your fraction denominator is so that it will cancel. But you have to do it to every term. So when you do that on this first term, that would give us a 3x because the negative and the 2 cancel. Negative 2 times y is negative 2y. And then negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. So that would be our standard form.
Alrighty guys, this is another one for you to try. It says a line contains the point 0, 0 and 1, 4. Select all the equations that represent this line. So it might take you some time. Um, and when you are done, you just want to click on this button so that you can see the answers. So keep in mind that you may want to pause the screen now. And so you grab some scratch paper so you can figure this question out. Alrighty, checking your answers. It looks like there are two answers here. Um, the second answer and this third answer. It says a line contains the point 0, 0 and 1, 4. Select all the equations that represent this line. Um, keep in mind that on the EOC there are these questions that are like multi-response questions. Um, so there may be more than one answer. Also, if you have something like this and you're not sure what to do on a test, um, you can take points and you can just plug them in if you'd like. That's one way to do it. So this is your X and this is your Y. And a point and you could plug that in anywhere you see an X and a Y keeping in mind that you want to plug in both points into everything to check um, so let's just make sure you're okay with this you could have found the slope that was another way so to find the slope we could do 4 minus 0 over 1 minus 0 equals 4 over 1 which is just 4 so that's our slope that's our M and remember slope intercept form is our normal um, most seen form so that's y equals mx plus b. And I can replace my slope in there. So y equals 4x. Now the b is our initial value or our y-intercept. Don't know if you recognize this, but 0, 0 is your y-intercept. Um, so we're going to put a 0 here. And that is because it has 0 for your x. So one equation would be y equals 4x plus 0 or 4x, which is this equation. Um, and then you're looking for every form. These get a little tricky here if you look. These will not work um, when you plug in your points. You can see that because those say x equals. So that's a little different. I almost got tricked here with this bottom one, but that has a square. And remember, anytime it has a square like that, that's a parabola, which means it looks like a u. Um, we know it's going up like that because 4 is positive. So that would not be... Um, good for this one even though our data might fit because only because this question says a line and this is not a straight line um, that's a quadratic function which is why that one did not work alrighty guys I hope this helped you um, kind of reminder good reminder of what domain and range are um, as well as our equations and writing equations, giving specific information. Um, so please, if you have some time and you want to practice a couple more, just click on this link right here. It will take you out of the video. Um, if you have any questions for me, I've left my um, email address. Feel free to email me with any questions that you may have. Good luck on your test, and we will talk soon.